Welcome back loves. Today is a long awaited video, which is an update slash way over a year wear and tear thoughts review video on the Louis Vuitton Poussin bag in the PM size in the cream color. I cannot believe we've made it this far. I have so many thoughts. And it seems like this bag isn't going anywhere. It seems like it is just popping up in more colors and just growing in popularity. So thought I would give you guys my thoughts after owning it for more than a year, almost two years. Crazy. Is it almost two years? Yeah, I think it is almost two years. Um, and my love for this bag hasn't gone anywhere. So I want to give you pros and cons for sure. Give you some negatives on the back, but overall share my thoughts. Is it worth it? Would I buy it again in this color? Have thoughts there and just everything you could possibly want to know about the Louis Vuitton Cousin bag. So stay tuned for the video. I'm not looking to me, no friends. No. So I wanted to look back. I actually purchased this bag March 11th, 2021. So yeah, it's been about a year and a half of owning this bag. When I purchased this bag, I believe the price was around $35.50. So I had seen it on the runway for one of their new lines. Um, and I don't remember if it was, a, I think it was a spring, summer. And I fell in love with the bag in this color. So I pre-ordered it through my essay at Louis Vuitton and he was able to secure it for me. At the time, we weren't sure if this was gonna be a limited edition, if the bag was gonna be around to stay, or if the colors were gonna change, all of that. And at the time it came in two different sizes. It came in the PM and the MM. And you know, with, with buying something sight unseen, it's difficult because you don't know how the sizing is gonna work for you, but I wanted the white color and the cream color only came in the PM size. So that's the size I went with, had you know, no expectations to actually get my hands on it, but I did. And let me tell you, it's been a journey. I've loved this bag for so long and I went out of my comfort zone. Almost all of my bags are black leather or just black in general and I have like a Saint Laurent tote that's cream. I've had little itty bitty like SLGs that are in lighter colors, but to spend and buy a decently sized bag in cream is incredibly daunting and scary. And so I went out of my comfort zone because originally this is the color I wanted. And then I was like, well, if they don't, if I can't get my hands on cream, maybe I'll settle for black and so i just felt like that was playing it safe because i could not stop thinking about this bag when it came out so i paid i think at the time it was three thousand five hundred fifty dollars was the price after the fashion show and to pre-order it so that's how much i pre-ordered it for at this point this bag retails for about forty seven hundred dollars which is a crazy increase in pricing so this is this goes back to what i, I always say to myself if I can't live without the bag and I know I have the funds to buy it and I'm gonna kick myself later on if I don't, the bag price will always go up. So why not pay for the price that it's gonna be at the lowest? And for a long time, that was the lowest. They were selling this on pre-loved sites, third-party sites for much more because it was such a popular color and hard to get. So now, you could probably find this in store. You could find it online, which is great. But I got it at phenomenal price. I got it brand new from the store. And I actually got to unwrap it. Like it came from like the warehouse or the factory. Not factory, well, I guess factory. And it was all wrapped up. No one had touched it. And so me and my SA were in the store unwrapping every little piece. And it was just such a special experience. So I will remember that forever. And... Listen, my fears are not there anymore. I always knew that there was gonna be some level of care with this bag, but let me tell you guys, 
And this may not be the same for how they're making it now because it's been over a year. There are different types of leather that they could be using, like same type of leather, but maybe the leather back then was made a little differently. You never know what iteration of a bag you're getting, but this bag, and let me see if I can tell you where it's made because I know a lot of you care about that. So this one was made in Italy. I don't care where bags are made ever. Um, to me, it's all the same. I've had defective bags from France and I've had perfect bags from the US. So to me, it doesn't matter. But this bag, I have no organizer for it. And I'm usually the stickler for organizers. If you guys look at it, it is pristine. Look at the bottom, look at the corners, no creasing. Just like the subtle like puffiness creasing that's been there since day one. I mean, and it's okay to get like worn in and loved up a little bit, but really this bag looks sickeningly beautiful since, since I got it. So yeah, this bag has really held up. I mean, there is definitely some creasing, but that's normal and it just, it still looks so puffy and stunning. So I, I just truly love this bag. The inside on this one is a darker green, which is nice because honestly, I can put questionable things in my bag and I just don't wanna have to worry about it too much. So yeah, I mean, I did not get the organizer for this bag. I would consider it if it started losing its shape a little bit, but I'm really not worried. When I put things in the bag, usually they're stacked up and it just stands up straight. It doesn't weigh anything down and I'm, you know, pretty careful about looking out for any sort of like structure wear. Um, I mean, there's definitely like tiny little mark, like, like specks. Um, pretty careful about what I wear with this bag. Um, no new denim, no new active wear that's heavily dyed active wear usually is unless I've washed it um, just pretty careful about that aspect but not so much about like how much I wear and all of that so this bag still looking stunning the hardware looks beautiful the inside is still pristine the chain gorgeous and I've used this chain as like a necklace I put it on other bags and we love an interchangeable chain bag slash strap bag. Um, that brings me to the canvas strap. Oh, and I, I feel like I've done, I've talked about this, but I sprayed this bag with Apple Guard. I felt like Apple Guard is pretty good about helping with like color transfer. So I wanted to give this bag the best shot at staying as pristine as it can. And guess what? It worked. Watch me now like have a stain on this bag. <laughs> Um, but I also sprayed the strap with Apple Guard because it has Vachetta on it. This strap made me a little bit nervous because it's a fabric strap, but to be honest, not a single mark on here. And when I wear this bag, I usually wear it with either or. I don't wear it with both the chain and the canvas strap because it's a little too much for me. And I think the bag itself with the chain is such a statement that it's a little bit more of what I wanna go with for that look and a little bit more dressy, a little bit more edgy. And I think that's a classy, classy look, a little bit more nighttime. And then if I'm grabbing this bag to run errands for the day, I will put the comfy, soft canvas drop on there. So I can wear it on my shoulder or I can wear it as a crossbody and a little bit more free, a little bit more comfy because the chain itself is really, really heavy. So those are the ways I wear it. You can totally take the chain off and wear it as just a clutch bag, uh, which looks beautiful. But I mean, the chain is such a stunning statement. Why take it off? So, so on to some cons about the bag. This little dongle tab is still the bane of my existence. <laughs> I don't let it bother me too much, but I do notice when this little piece here isn't, you know, fitting right through, I have to manhandle it a little bit, stick it through. And yeah, it's a little bit annoying. I also find sometimes when I'm grabbing the bag 
the chain gets stuck underneath one of the flaps and I don't want to like yank it but you know that's a little frustrating but at that point I'm nitpicking on some of the smaller issues with the bag the other issue I will say is pretty annoying as well is the middle compartment I almost just wish they left the middle compartment open like the sides I get it it's great to have a zippered compartment in the middle keep things a little bit more secure but if I ever like half zip it and I'm closing the bag and the zipper moves around, this gets stuck and I feel like I'm scratching something or I'm snagging on something and I find it irritating. So what I usually do is either keep things in the middle compartment that I'm not going to grab for the whole day and then put everything on the sides or I just like don't put anything in the middle. And... I try not to overstuff the bag by putting everything in every single um, compartment, but I usually keep like sunglasses, wallet on one side, keys and phone on the other side and keeps it pretty structured. It's full, you could fit a little bit more, but I don't need the middle pocket if I'm gonna be like not grabbing anything out of it really. Um, it is pretty convenient to have to do two, two double zippers. So that's definitely a con. Another con for me, which now doesn't really bother me, was that they added Vachetta to the bag strap. When there's no Vachetta on the bag, I just thought that was odd. I don't know why they didn't just go with the cream leather. Um, but I do think the strap having Vachetta makes it fun for my other bags that are canvas because it matches them so I can actually take this strap and put it on my on my pochette accessoire or on my mini pochette any of my canvas bags this strap looks great with so I guess it's a pro and a con but I mean that's really it that's all that really bothers me about the bag I do think the price increase is steep I feel like they were not going to continue with the bag, but I think there was so much demand for it. They decided to meet the demand with more colors, more options, more sizes, and then increase the price there. So obviously it doesn't affect me today, but if I want to buy this bag in another color, I have to pay a higher price tag. So would I buy this bag again? Yes, 100% yes. I love this bag. Do I wish I had gotten the black leather over the cream? Sometimes yes, mostly because I love this bag so much and I'm <laughs> during winter and fall, I wear a lot of black, I wear a lot of black all the time. Sometimes it's nice to just have a black, amazing, beautiful bag to grab. But like I said, I have so many other black bags. So, in reality, if I had to choose one or the other, I would a hundred times choose the cream. But if I couldn't get my hands on it and I didn't have so many black bags, it is such a phenomenal option. So there are other colors that have come out. They've had like nude caramel, peanut butter colors. Those are all great, but my heart just went towards the cream and I'm happy, I'm happy with my decision. I would have a really hard time picking today. There are just so many beautiful, stunning colors. The ones that are cream with the like flowery and like indent coloring on the, it's just beautiful. So overall, if you are considering this bag, definitely look pre-loved because they hold up really well. Um, and you may be able to find it a little bit less expensive. I mean, I'm talking through like my decision process. It was like in the $3,000 range a little bit more palatable. At that time, that was the most expensive bag that I owned, but I had to have it. But what a stunning bag. My husband loves this bag. I get a ton of compliments on it. I just think it is a trendy, but really functional bag that can stand the test of time. I think this bag is gonna be around for a while and for a good reason. It is great looking. It is very, good size wise and it's got so many different variations of how you can wear it so if you are on the fence this is your sign to get the bag 
and you know you have the pick of every size you could possibly want you've got the bb you've got the pochette version you've got the mm version which i've never actually tried on but i would be curious to try it on i wonder like what could fit in there maybe like my large agenda that would be really cool but alas we're not made of money so i wanted to give you guys a quick update on this bag not so quick blabbered on for a while but always happy to answer questions about this bag i do owe you guys a updated bag collection video i'm going to a couple weddings the next couple of weekends but i just need to set aside some time to do that with you guys i love looking back on my old bag collection videos and kind of seeing what's changed i've added I've added and taken out some bags, some good vintage ones, and I feel like my collection's like really becoming very clean and well-rounded. So I'm so excited to film that for you guys. But if you have any questions on the Kusan bag, feel free to shoot me a DM, leave a comment below. Like I said, beautiful, beautiful bag. I wear it all the time, so many different ways to wear it. And I hope it was helpful to kind of hear my thoughts after a year. As always, you can find me on Instagram at Decorn Designer where I post daily content, bag of the day, what I'm taking with me, random thoughts, outfit inspo, home office inspo, if you know, you know. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you guys stopping by this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.